It does of course some uh, a little bit of problems with using a square material on a round frame. Hello there guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Safari Russia. Hey, so we're in the woods, as you can see. Some of you recognize this uh, location here, the two dead pines or the fallen pines and uh, the little campsite there, campsite demonstration I made of these uh, Siberian native uh, rings. But this is not gonna, what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do something about survivor shelters because I want to make a shelter, I want to actually make a camp here for a number of reasons. But while doing that video on the rings over there, I noticed that there's a nice open spot over here. And that could be used for a campsite. Because I want to, one of the reasons here is that I want to take as much of these two pines there as I possibly can. And blah 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 blah. But I also had the, actually for many years, thought about a survival shelter. Just give me a second here. Uh, for an intro and we'll get right on to it is because you have heard me many times say shelters they're not really that important the most important in my opinion for shelter is when it's cold when it's raining because making a shelter of natural materials which can shed you from the rain really really fast is really really difficult making a, a waterproof shelter without any man-made materials is time consuming especially in a forest like this so as i said i actually been thinking about for a long long time to make this specific shelter just like an, as, a, as an experiment to see if it's worth to uh, to store some of these materials or to pack some of these materials i'm going to use uh, just like I have all sorts of other stuff always packed in my pack, including toilet paper and a multi-tool and some cordage and so on. Right, so uh, I think we're just going to get on with it. What we're going to do first is to make a tripod. All right, so, so you might be shocked by learning this, but a tripod starts with uh, three sticks. And uh, we have three sticks here. The good thing about this location here is that we have a lot of this, what I would call uh, trash wood. It's a willow and uh, it doesn't hurt anybody to cut it down a little bit. But here we have some uh, plastic sheeting. This is just ordinary transparent plastic sheeting from, uh, for construction basically. Here we have some bank line. We're going to use some bank line just because I have it and I have a lot of it. So uh, that's going to be awesome. One reason for making a teepee-like thing is that I want to be able to heat the shelter here as well so they don't have to be that long but they'll do they'll do i just have to find out where to uh something like this where do i have to uh lash them together we have to lash a tripod how i normally do that is to make a uh what is it called uh, constrictor knot, strangling knot, I forgot what it's called in English. But anyway, it's a knot like this, which uh, tightens in on itself. I'll most likely get to to uh, what it's called. But anyway, <coughs> we can start our lashing with uh, that. You can see it opens up and... <coughs> Self-tightening knot. So we're going to start that around here, something like that. Bank line is also fairly strong. Not so faster. <clears throat> so what we want to do is we want to start to to lash a little bit here. This is not a video about lashing tripods, but uh, why not? 
And I want to do this, uh, it doesn't have to be too tight by the way. But the thing is with shelters, as, I mean I've said it many times in my videos, I don't consider shelters necessarily that important, not even during winter. You've seen me overnight without shelters in very cold weather and so on. So even you know, snow, you don't get wet from snow if you are properly insulated and all that good stuff, right? So uh, snow is not that scary really. And uh, improvised shelters, they rarely hold any they rarely hold any heat, and if we are in a, in a, not a survival situation, but if we have to make an unexpected overnight and so on, I mean, it can take a long time to make a, a shelter, an improvised shelter, and as I said, to make a waterproof shelter takes forever. And if you haven't tried it before, then it takes even longer. So now I know if this works, because we're going to do some overnighting in this stuff here, uh, now I know if it works. Then it works. These are a little bit long for my taste. So we're gonna cut them like this or something. Of course cut them with the silky saw here. These guys there, to da, they might come in handy. So the lashings are not too tight. That's because when we open this guy here up, they will uh, become tighter. And if they are tight from the beginning, then they might, uh, then they might break all together. But they are a little bit loose. Nothing, nothing scary. I think everything is fine. We're gonna weave in some. Uh, we are gonna weave in some uh, some other branches, of course. Why do we have the stick here? As I said, I want it to be a little bit taller, a little bit the diameter, a little bit wider, a larger than me. Because uh, if I can lay in the center, then I can definitely lay around the perimeter and have a small fire going on on the inside. And we're going to try out all of that, of course, but uh, now we're going to harvest some more sticks. And I'm not going to bore you with that. We made the frame here, and uh, now it should become a little bit more obvious what's the idea here. Basically squeeze out on the edge of the tent or the TP here. Have somewhat of a little small fire out there. Maybe it's an option to make a fire on the outside, so the radiated heat will be trapped a little bit on the inside, but nonetheless, if... Uh, we need to spend the night or night and day or two nights and two days out of the rain, then uh, I think it's uh, very nice to be able to make a fire inside the shelter and uh, a teepee is really good for that. So, I have a new phone to show you guys of course, because I use these phones here a lot for navigation and all that good stuff, but not only, but they're really helpful as you can see. So, as I always say, these devices here are awesome, let's try and measure. We have our position here, and we have to cross out there, 174 meters. Dum. A little bit less than 500 meters from here, right? Duck, 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 duck. So this is a completely new model, and uh, it's uh, premiering at the moment. And uh, I will not make a review on it or anything like that. I just want to show to you guys some of these features and uh, you can just follow the links in the description if it's something that you are, are out for, you can say. As you can see, it's FuzzyBot F109, brand new phone. As you can see, I use them for offline maps, of course, and uh, for offline maps, powerful processor, chipset and so on is really, really important. It has an awesome uh, display here which can you can actually use. You can make a watch uh, and so on and uh, you can use it for cameras and all that good stuff. You can get fast access to your maps and so on via this uh, little guy here. And as a new processor, much more powerful processor than the ones I am using. So this must be really good for the offline maps. In my opinion, it's called uh, Helios OctaCore MT6835V. 
This 6300 compared to my old one here, which is uh, 6100. What else can we say about the phone? 50 megapixel uh, main camera. It has Android 14, which is also uh, awesome. It's more awesome than the 13, that's for dang sure. And uh, I have tried these, I have tested these uh, extensively, you know, underwater, uh, in hard frost and so on. And I never ever had a problem with any of my phones here. And uh, they're not paying me to do these reviews here whatsoever, but I do sell the phones when I'm done with the review, so I get something out of it, of course. It's a little beefy, but it also has a 10,600 milliamp battery, which is also really awesome for the woods and so on, but we should, of course, always carry compasses and so on. But anyway, guys, check the links in the description to the Fossey bot. There's a discount code, and uh, or oh, there's actually a discount um, campaign going on. So uh, you can check out the website. I mean, they'll ship from within the uh, EU and the United States, so uh, no problems there. So check out the Fossibot F109 and uh, get yourself a good app and uh, you'll most likely never get lost in the woods. I don't have a lighter with me. I'm a, s a smoker. But I do have my uh, Swiss army knife with this little firefly here, so... Uh, we're gonna have to start a fire with uh, the world's largest, <laughs> no, the world's smallest uh, ferro rod. So let's see how that goes. Ah, there we go. Take a little bit of a smaller piece here. I just want to see how the how the smoke travels and so and so because I would imagine that the uh, such a shelter here would be useful when it's like plus 10 C's, plus 2 C's, plus 1, just above freezing, raining, cold, unpleasant, what not. <clears throat> As I said, we do have some, uh, some winds, but it's def definitely, uh, it's definitely cozy in here. We're also going to do an overnight here, of course, but that's uh, not going to be today. You know, guys, I'm a, I'm a school teacher, right? I, I, I teach, I'm not a school teacher, actually, but I do teach English in the local school. <laughs> it's uh, more of a charity thing than uh, anything else, really. But this is actually pretty awesome. I mean, we could definitely cook some stuff and we could hang some uh, trousers and socks and boots up there between the uprights there, right? And uh, most likely be able to dry out our stuff. Whoa, Spockhäuser. It is nice and warm. <laughs> I can definitely make a larger fire than this, but again, that's not gonna be, that's not gonna be now. That's not going to be today. And the smoke is not really that annoying. That is pretty darn crazy. Yeah, so what can this be used for? Why even do this? Why not just bring a tarp? Because, um, first of all, as I said, it's just an experiment. I've been thinking about it for a long time. It's crazy. I hadn't done it earlier, actually. <laughs> but uh, I'd say, of course, I would not pack... Uh, a piece of this size of uh, plastic every time I go into the woods, right? But if it was uh, late, late uh, autumn and uh, out hunting, deep forest, maybe alone or something, it would be worth bringing, and it would be even maybe even worth bringing and just make a, a fast uh, little camp from from this, because the tarp will not give you the same protection as this. For that is for dang sure. And I mean, it is possible to be uh, 
to, to, to be delayed uh, exiting the forest by of bad weather and so on. I, I tried it once. I think it was it, no, I think it was actually on camera with my hunting dog, my old hunting dog, and that was absolutely miserable. And I even had my, uh, but I had my shelter in that direction. It's gone now, of course, but uh, it was miserable anyway because it was cold. It was kind of winter. It was bad firewood and all that good stuff. Now I get a little bit of smoke in the eyes, but anyway, I just wanted to try out. Is this a valid option? And in my personal opinion, it is for sure. I'm pretty sure we could make a larger fire than this. We're gonna try that. So guys, please check the links in the description. Please check out the Fossibot F109, Rocket Outdoors phone. Please consider supporting the channel and all that good stuff. There's links in the description to boost it, to subscribe star. Thank you very much to you guys who are supporting the channel in these for the channel so challenging times but anyway guys get out on train get it done do something awesome do something nice and uh, see you in the next video guys thank you very much for your time